So, what is the name of this park, and what is the overall theme? Park is called Bush Gardens Egypt, uh, as the name suggests, largely inspired by Bush Gardens chains. Um, the story is basically kind of like that whole Six Flags thing going on. They decided to expand out to the Middle East and reproduced a bunch of world wonders. And, you know, some of these coasters look like things from their chain of parks, and some things are totally unrelated. So we got a really Sweet. nice entrance plaza and parking lot with all these flowers and foliage. Tons of good buildings. Yeah, so this is uh, represented to be like a Cairo. You know, like um, if you ever go to Busch Gardens, Tampa, or most theme parks, they always have like that town inspired a little bit by Disney where they just have like all these nice buildings as you go in. So the idea was like, you know, you kind of walk down the strip, you'll see food, gifts, you know, rentals, things like that. Sweet. So we got like a log flume. And then this is like the first big thing that caught my eye. Yeah, so this whole area is inspired by obviously the Egyptian god Ra. So kind of a lot of that in here. So pyramids, temples, it's meant to feel kind of ruiny. Like, you know, they found it. Um, the twister is called Amon Ra. So it's meant to be like representative of the god. And yeah, it goes right into his mouth in the fire. It's that last segment of the, the, the layout there. Yeah, this looks like a really cool like dig site. Yeah, like a lot of ruining things and ruin things. You got all like the you know the things that are up in the air to look at like the hieroglyphics. See, like the cards are meant to represent that. Um, the ride there is pretty fun. If you uncheck. Click on that ride there. Just uncheck full pay, uh, full load. And you can watch that spin. So it's meant to be like the people are holding up the vehicles. Yep. You can see they <laughs> kick their little legs. It's pretty It's pretty goofy. I love it. Um, it's just invisible swan vehicles. And obviously then the raft vehicles on top. Kind of representing like, you know, when they'd hold those pharaohs up and walk them places. They'd always have them up in the air. That's awesome. So I'm happy we've gotten away from that as a society. Yeah. <laughs> And then you got the pyramid buster there. It's just a you know your launch free fall, busting out of the top of the pyramid. Oh, and then you got this little hammer. Oh yeah, if you watch that. So if you watch the guest there, maybe not this one. We'll see if he comes up next. I think it's time to do it one time. So wait for the next guest to show up. Okay. There you go. And... Hit the hammer. Oh, it nice. so it's just like goofy. Yeah. And then if you click on um, bounce the ball ride is a little detail is pretty happy about. If you click on those people there, I think I did like Terry and Josh. But if you look at the, the, the things they're holding, I think they're oh, scroll one more time. Flip one more time and then go to the left. A little more. Oh, yeah, see got it. Keeps in front of bounce the ball. Yeah. If you click them, I think I gave them like ramen bowls or something. But it oh. kind of looked like a ball. So yeah. Like, that kind of is convenient. Yeah, I thought that was cool. Looks like they're about to, like, throw it or whatever. That's cool. Okay, and then we have this big RMC. Yep, this one is uh, Cyrus's Fury. So mostly based on my memory of when I ride Iron Gwazi. It's like my home park. So a lot of it is that and just watching POVs of lots of other RMCs to kind of come up with something that I was happy with here. That pyramid in the middle, um, I forgot the name of it. Hold on a second. I can tell you the name of the pyramid there, what it's based on. So that... The elevated pyramid? Temple it goes through. Yeah, that temple it's going through is based on the Luxor L-U-X-O-R temple. So that was one of my first wonders that kind of incorporated into the park. And I thought it'd be cool to have a coaster go through it, which made me make this RMC. Yeah, it's pretty wild. What made you choose the green rails and black supports? Because that's pretty unusual, I think. Um, if you do brown, I felt like when you zoom out macro-wise, it makes the park feel too brown. And I always am the type to feel like the way I always think of coasters is I should want my eyes to be drawn to it, not away, or blend in. So if it were brown, then it would blend into all the nearby surroundings, and it would probably make you start feeling like there's brown overload. 
Got so the it. black is kind of meant to break it up, especially with like all the black roofs around the park. From a macro perspective, to me, it felt like it blended in. Because I did go brown, I went beige, I tried a couple colors, and black felt the best to me. No, that makes sense. Now we have this really cool family boomerang, really well themed. Yeah, it's uh, Hathor, which is another like Egyptian god. Don't remember. Oh, I thought you said half Thor, and I was like, huh? No, that's yeah. great. Love, beauty, pleasure. Yeah, so. That's my kind of guy. I like these uh, pathing separations in the middle of these plazas to make the the ground look less, uh, I don't know what to say, but just less plain. Yeah, 94 threw that in there. So thank you, 94. Oh, we've got yeah. another coaster. You know, it's based on kind of a hybrid of things. So I wanted to do a triple launch, but I also like Cheetah Hunt. So I was like, I could just do both. So that's what this ended up being. So just to kind of took those and typical intimate LSMs and kind of just put them together. So I thought it'd be fun. Looks great. I think the scenery also enhances it. Lots of interaction, and I do like that it, you know, it doesn't feel barren. There's parts of it where that it's open, but it doesn't feel barren. Ooh, we got a dark ride over here too. I didn't see this. Oh yeah, that is the Cairo Market Bash. So it's meant to be, if you watch it, you'll see once in a while a car will fly by. Um, yeah, so it's supposed to be like a camel and then like a little wagon behind it as they fly through there. And then uh, there's actually a nice little sign too for the entrance. If you turn it twice, you can see the entrance to the ride. I was actually pretty happy with that. Yeah, right oh, yeah. there, that market bash. Yeah, so it's like the, it's like the camel and the wagon flying through like a broken wall. That's and you see fun. Right, come by. Yeah. Oh, super nice stairs. I can't skip over these stairs. That's awesome looking. Okay, now we're moving across the river. We'll really mention cool with the bridge. temple real quick on the prophet. That's based on a, another mosque. It's called the Al Azhar Mosque. So. And that temple on the island is called Philae Temple. It's like an Egyptian temple that's like on an island. I thought it was pretty sick. So yeah, that's what that is in the middle of the river. And there's like a use for it. You got like your off-road vehicles going around it. That's really nice. Yeah, the Ruin Explorers. Got a cool disco and an inverted coaster. Jeez. That's probably the inverted the coaster one. is... Something I was pretty happy about. So it started off as a, believe it or not, a Georgia Scorcher, Scorcher stand-up coaster. And I really liked the flow of it from when I recreated it. Um, but I wanted an invert. So I turned it into an invert, and I really liked it. So all I did, really, is I changed a couple of things, kept that corkscrew section, which is pretty much how uh, Georgia Scorcher is, and it updated the second half to just kind of be its own thing, which is mostly based around rides like Montu. Mostly mm -hmm. with like that first drop into right into that turnaround there. So it's pretty happy with how that kind of interacted with that area. That's really cool. Helix over the lift hill. And we got this really well, these walls going around here. So we've got this giant swing. Is there a ride in here? Or is that just like restaurants? Just the food. Yeah, just food. Oh, nice. And then we got and this. this Yes, the Lighthouse of Alexandria. So that's like kind of like the central point. This is based, this whole island is based loosely on like, uh, you know, that Egyptian lost island, Lighthouse Alexandria, Lost World Wonder. So I kind of just took a bunch of different reference images and ideas and made them into this island. And that is a whip ride. Do the whip. Nice. Oh, nice. Looks like a pharaoh. Ooh, the eyes light up. That's cool. <laughs> yeah, I thought that was fun to have a pharaoh head for when the guests are about to get launched down that ridiculous hill. If you click it, so I tried to name all the manufacturers. This one I just kind of trolled and just put Chris Sawyer Inc. Because I was like, this isn't based on anything. I just thought this looked cool. So Somebody's going to do it eventually. Infinity Rapids kind of does that, but this is like an exaggerated version of that. So that's kind of where the whole like Suedo realism comes in, where... I tried to have everything a rapids is supposed to have, except that drop. And like you said, like it could be possible someday. You never know. Mm -hmm. So, 
Got these really cool dual inverted ships. This is my favorite area of the park, just from looking at it. It's like a kid's area, it seems like. They got a playground, a rock wall, a jumpy place, a small powered coaster. Looks really good. It's funny because when I first built this, I hated it. Like, I did not like this area at all because I felt, I, I don't know, I just didn't like the way it felt modular at first. But then as I did more scenery and foliage, because initially I just had Ravager there and I had the wet pad and I didn't know what to do with the rest. But as I filled it in, I started to become like really happy with this area. The whole playground is functional too. So there's actually a slide that will go up on either of those. You can see that guest waiting right now. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they go. They're about to go down the steep one. On their stomach. That's great. <laughs> and they just get off. So I thought that was pretty fun. The wet pad has a uh, car on it. So if you zoom in on those two people. Yeah, you can show, uh, see them sitting in it. It's a wet car. You know, those cars you'd see in the, the wet pads, you sitting in it, it's by spraying water everywhere and getting you soaking wet. It's like the idea behind that. That's cool. And then you got hatchet. I like that ride sign I put there if you zoom in. It's, um, I think it's two bobsled cars and a reverse single rail to kind of make it look like an axe. Yeah, that's really cool. Give it like that little bit of, uh, you know, character. These buildings are all very nice as well. Okay, so we got giant, looks like Babylon walls. So this is the Babylon Gardens section. Yeah, so this is the Hanging Gardens of Babylon. Um, it was just based, since there's not, it's obviously, you know, from what I can understand, it's not like a real, real place. It's a lot of like fictional, biblical, things like that. So I kind of just leaned into, okay, it's probably not a real place. Let's just make it like really overgrown and, you know, have the temples and throw a coaster in here and kind of integrate everything in. So this coaster is called the Sling. It's based loosely on Icebreaker if it was good. Um, Whoa. Yeah, I love the top hat it has and the inversion. So it's kind of still like a family coaster, but maybe just a less intense, like, you know, hyper. It's kind of like in the middle. Like an it's extreme intense like BNM Twister versus like a family premiere. Oh, I like how it cuts into the up. other area. Just kind of sneaks it, through. It breaks through the wall kinda, yeah. I really wanted a ride there. I think ninety four remembers. There used to be a bobsled that interacted with the wall. And I tried a bobsled, I tried a couple different coaster types until I kinda we landed on an LSM. And then while we wait for this hyper to go up, we're gonna look at this theater. So we got like a little play going on right here. Yeah, so it's based on uh, the biblical tale of the Good Samaritan. Um, so basically, like some dudes like broken on the road, and like because he's uh, I think a Levite, I think a Levite, no one wants to uh, you know help him, and then a random dude comes and helps the guy, but he was like a Samaritan. The Good nice. Samaritan is some guy. Yeah, it's some biblical tale, but I don't know it off the top of my head. But I read it and I was like, oh, that'd be a cool place for a Babylonian play because it kind of fits. So. Looks really cool. I'm watching the hyper now too. This is really well paced, really good hyper. Ninety four put this one together. He actually has uh functional trim brakes and things like that around it. And it also has a functional uh sloped brake section too. Which is pretty cool. So when you Over. watch it towards the end you'll see it uh you'll see it slow down when it goes down that hill there. She's strong? No, it's just uh there's a leading vehicle that's just ahead of it. You see it slows oh. down. Oh. Okay, that's cool. And then you've got like roller coaster chairs where the audience can sit and watch the show. Yeah, it's all um six seater cars from the vertical dive coaster. They're just kind of put close enough together that they kinda of look like they're just, you know, stadium seating. Oh, there they all go. So what other oh Half diagonal bridge. Can't forget that. That's really tough to pull off. CSO. Or NCSO. The hardest part wasn't really getting it in. So, like, making a non functional half diagonal is like daunting, but not too difficult. The hard part for me with this was trying to get the guests on it without it looking weird. Because, you know, the path, first of all, they have to be above it at all times. They're not like going through the track. You don't also want them going through the wall. Mm -hmm. Cause that kind of ruins the illusion a little bit. So it was a little tough to get the peeps to look like natural in a way that made sense to me. That's where I spent a lot of time on it to make sure that they don't look like they're glitching through the floor or anything. Well, it looks like you pulled it off pretty well. We got a transport ride or just a sightseeing 
too. Or no, I saw it's a transport, right? Yeah, I saw another station. Yeah. So there's three stations. There's one by the Lighthouse of Alexandria, and then there's one in the uh, Sumerian Outpost slash Babylon, and then one right by Ra. So it kind of gets you all around the park. I didn't want to put one right by the exit because typically I thought parks don't want you to leave. So I yeah. kind of use that methodology. I was like, I'm not going to put a station right by the exit or anything. They're going to have to walk. So Smart move, smart move. Got to keep that guest count up. Well, anything else you wanted to point out while we're looking at it currently? Um, You could find Dirk Link in this park. Let's find him. This was more of an accident, more than unintentional, but I thought it was pretty hilarious. I was just—I always like to play with the peep editor and try to learn something new with it every time I build a park or an RCC or anything. You turn it twice, and then just turn off the foliage or make it invisible for a second, and then you can kind of look at him and turn it one more time. And it just like I got him in this position where it looks like he's like, <laughs> I don't know, about to squat and take a dump or something. I thought it was hilarious. I was like, I'll just put this in the shrubs or something, but. That was really the only thing I could think of. That uh, There's a lot of little detail like that. I tried to plug into the park in a lot of places. I tried to name the peeps things that, I don't know, what I would probably be thinking if I were them for some of it. So some of it I just kind of put names in because I was doing it for so long that I felt like I was going delirious doing peep scenes, and I couldn't do any more by, like, the 120th peep. So, Yeah, I can see those. They're spread around the park, frozen peeps. Oh, the bongo scene is the only other thing. Yeah, if you want to zoom in on that bongo scene. So those are stools. And then you got a guy, like, looking for tips there with his bucket. He's singing. And you get everybody kind of just watching. You know, when you go to the theme park, sometimes you get that musician and everyone, like, blocks the whole path. Hex so on the bongo. Capture that. That's great. There was a voice chat we had, like, I want to say six months ago. And he kept showing us this, like, CSO object of this disgusting looking bongo player and i don't know it stuck with me because i thought it was like the most weird object so when i was building this I was like oh that'd be kind of cool put something put a bongo player in this scene so well those little scenes add to it because it's true there's parts of the like real life parks that have people just standing around watching or waiting or doing something that's not requiring them to move around so i think that adds character to the park overall <laughs> yeah i think it's amazing this is a really well done park and it's a huge success. So awesome job. Thank you. Yeah, and I'll say thanks to everyone in Social Builds too for like looking at this over the last couple of months when I post little screenshots and things. Thanks to Brew for uh, all your feedback. Hex too for his very blunt feedback, which made me go back and be like, okay, I gotta, gotta be things I can improve here. Um, so yeah, appreciate it, you guys. And of course, thanks to 94 for you know going through it and polishing things and giving me ideas for how to make it better. Them. 